Hello, I'm, I'm David Parkin, and uh, we are, you can't really see it, but we're sitting in my installation, uh, Del David Parkin's Delusions of Grandeur, um, which is based on, two years ago I had my first bipolar manic episode, and I ended up getting sectioned for four months! Um, and this is... It's got my writings on the wall. It's got songs I recorded when I was in there, heavily drugged. Um, uh, and it's got, I didn't like the NHS bedrooms. I, did, I, I got put in seclusion a couple of times and I didn't like it. So while I was in there, I drew up these plans of what a really nice bedroom would be like. And, um, and I made, I showed them to the nurses and the doctors, and they didn't. They didn't. They did nothing. Um, so I've made my perfect NHS bedroom, my perfect uh, seclusion. Um, da -da 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 -da. And it's got notebooks that I did when I was in there. When I finally crashed, I ended up just writing "Stream of Consciousness" in a big black book. Uh, just to keep me occupied so you can listen to that um yeah and we've got work i also uh workshopped um art space and bradgate writers who are mental health service users and we've got some of their work up and also nearly finished uh there's a space over there where you can listen to interviews with my family and friends um who visited me so you get a, another view of of being bonkers uh, i i what was the word, phrase catastrophize i uh, i have a problem with sleep doing this i'm also rehearsing for my children's musical the nose that nobody picked um and i'm doing my uh um clinical depression concept album show Good Friday, and I'm okay about it now, but it was a lot. And I was like overthinking, and I was worried if I would be able to cope with it. Um, might have bought myself some sedative drugs online because, uh, yeah, um, late at night, uh, I've, as I said, I have a problem sleep, sleeping, and you just think, well, what if that happens? And, and I can't deal with that and that and ah! I was fine. I was great. Uh, because I was on a manic high. Um, and then my friends came, friends and family were like, hmm, Dave's not quite right. What's going on with Dave? But um, it was a very, leading up to the section, it was, um, probably one of the nicest times of my life it's it's uh but yeah and then my friends put me in and you know looking back i said a lot of things and did a lot of things uh, which probably weren't so so great but now i know i'm bipolar i like to think if i ever do become elevated again i'm not sure i would recognize it myself because I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm great. I'm having an epiphanous, an epiphanous moment in my life. Um, section, you know, but I, I hope my friends and my family would step in and, and try to manage it. So, as I said, I've uh, got a kid's musical and a kid's book. And sometimes, you know, you make stuff up. Wouldn't it? What if there was a nose alive in the garden that was brought up by snails? And that's art sometimes. Sometimes you imagine things. Uh, but sometimes uh, life just grabs you by the lapels and goes, I demand to be thought about and discussed. And and that's what this is. I, I mean... A lot of people say, oh, it's very brave. It's very brave. But for me, it was just 
such an odd experience that teaches you so much about uh, perceptions and the subjectivity of perceptions. And um, yeah, I just had to write about it. Um, I've been doing this. I've been, I've been wallowing. Before. I, I wallow as an artist. I've got one friend who's just a kind of really mediocre, low-level depressive. Not like me. I, I, I explode, you know. Um, but for me, jogging. Jogging is my is my absolute lifesaver. And, and I say to him, just go jogging. Just, just trust me, trust me. If you go jogging every day, it will change your life. It will change your life. And, and it doesn't. Um, and that uh, really annoys me. Um, but like with him, I just, now I've got to the point where I just, hang out with him and I don't really tell him what to do. Um, he lives with his gram, I'm oversharing, he might spot himself in. Um, and, and I just hang out with him. This is my classic anecdote. Um, so I was allowed out on like my second escorted walk and this is where a nurse is on a walk. She has to walk with you. And I just, I, I, we went to the um, NHS shop, uh, second hand shop. I was madly in love. I'd fallen madly in love with a, another patient. I uh, was a schizophrenic. And I bought her a necklace. And then I um, just started walking faster than my nurse. I was like, I'm, I'm going to Champagne Bar, do you want to come? You know, and she trailed off and um, and then and uh, the nurses came out in cars to try and get me, but I skipped through a hedge and then I was like, oh, walking into town's not going to work, uh, so I'll get a bus. So I got a bus, but I only had a pound. So I went on the bus with only the pan and I said, I'm sorry, I've, I've just been to see my friend at the Bradgate unit. He's having a mental breakdown. And I just forgot about the money and stuff. And I've only got a pound to get into town. Is that okay? And the bus driver gave me, <laughs> gave me the ticket. I'd like to thank the Academy. Um, and then I went into town um, and then I bought an engagement. I had my card with me though. So I bought an engagement ring for Morella. And uh, there was other stuff like I'd written up these rules, which I handed out. At, yeah, I won't go into the rules right now. Um, but I thought everyone had read these rules and were very happy because it's rules about how to live your life better. Um, and then, a uh, little, little tip for you here, if you are sectioned and, uh, and talking and talk regularly about escape, saying, I want to go to Champagne Bar, probably best when you do escape, not to go to the Champagne Bar. Um, so I went to the Champagne Bar um, my parents were decided just to hang out in a cafe near it and they saw me and they put in the hospital and They're like we can drive you back and I was like no, I'm not going anywhere So they had to get the police to get me um, For me dealing with my negativity uh, is Not drinking so much um, And exercise um, and I do have, I'm a bad sleeper, so I have a bedtime routine where I go to bed, I read for about an hour, then I uh, uh, meditate, um, and then I go to bed. 
Um, so I'm very conscious of that. I'm like, oh, okay, okay, I've got all this to do, but I'm a bit twitchy at the moment. I've got to go for a jog. Um, and am I negative? I think um, <clears throat> a while ago, I discovered a uh, suicide a guy hanging from a tree. Um, and he just looked like, it was horrible. He looked like he was, he was sitting, he looked like he was meditating, and I had to cut him down. And, and I think generally, I am a very negative person. I do think about these things. Because I was expecting to be like, oh my God, this thing's happened to me. I was like, ah, I'm gonna go mental. Um, but actually, I, I've spent a lot of time, you know, I've tried to commit suicide a few times um, and I've thought about it a lot and I feel like I understand it. I know personally, you know, if I ever do, it, it wasn't me, it was the illness. And so I kind of understood that. Um, and because I'm so morbid and I've thought about that and I understood that uh, it didn't really phase me for that long I think I'm doing quite well I'm quite on form like I was talking earlier about my friend who's a very sort of low level uh, depressive but for me when uh, depression is struck it's struck very hard very hard very fast so for me it's um it's very easy to see it as an illness um because it's really strange you know it's it's an illness of the emotions because you're still you but for me when it's happened to me um it's been very heavy and very quick um, and I don't want to kill myself but you know I know that when I'm in that state I will want to and I've, I've always considered this or maybe this is my chance to it's a bit like cancer or something or it's a you know an illness can kill someone and and I always want to establish, maybe this is my chance to, that if I do ever kill myself, I mean, statistically, my chances are far increased. It wasn't my final word. It wasn't, um, you know, I've lived, I've lived a happy life. Yeah, I don't like the idea of people, if I've committed suicide, thinking of that as my final statement. For me, from what I understand about myself and the illness, it was the illness. All I would say is, jog! Go jogging! Jog! It really helps! It makes such a huge difference to me. Um, just jog!